Hello, people. You all okay? Are you warm and fed and being looked after or looking after in contact with people you love? I hope so. Been looking forward to seeing you. It's been a crazy day. Could have done one of those days when I could have done with three or four more hours. But I kept on having ideas and uh, I'm, I'm excited about tonight's show. But I don't think I, don't think I know what's happening. Um, but something will happen and it'll be good. And I know I'm amongst friends. So um, whatever happens, we'll be absolutely fine. And uh, got some good tunes lined up. Just wish I'd had more time to practice them. But, you know, I think it's always better to be under-rehearsed than over-rehearsed. Hang on to that thought. Oh. There's been a lot of talk, hasn't there, about how we're going to exit, how we're going to unlock. And uh, I think we're all realising that we're not going back to uh, whatever normal was. Some things are going to change forever. And I don't know, I don't know if we'll ever be allowed to shake hands again or hug people outside our family and... Oh, that's going to get to me, that, because uh, I don't know, I really value the human contact, the warmth of you guys, you know, and I love sort of doing the vicar thing and seeing you all out and shaking hands and, and, and hugging and all that, so I'm going to have to, be, you know, it's going to have to be the Japanese, it's going to have to be that. I mean, the warmth is still going to be there, and that's the main thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So, tonight, um, you, you might be new, you might not know what I'm talking about, but I, I'm up here in North Lincolnshire, in the back of my garden, in my shed slash studio, and uh, this, is, this is my neck of the woods, has been for the last 15 years or so. And uh, my local arts centre, my local arts centre, <laughs> Liz's local Liz's art centre is called the Ropery Hall, and the whole building is called the Rope Walk, and it's up there in Barton on Humber, in the shadow of the Humber Bridge, and it's a wonderful, beautiful, exciting, vibrant, artistic, happening, flipping hive of wonderfulness, and uh, there's all kinds of galleries. There's a beautiful cafe, and down the down the far end because it's it is a, a, an ex rope walk rope works sorry and so it's uh, it's the length of a long bit of rope it's a quarter of a mile long and uh, it's a fantastic gig it's a wonderful gig and tonight I would have been there and so would some of you I imagine and we would have been launching we would have been launching this CD Time Stand Still which is uh, my new album And even though we're not doing that, because we're not there, well, we're going to do it later in the year. We're going to do it on August the 22nd, I think. Um, but there would have been no album without tonight, and I'll explain that. You see, I've been making this album for over seven years, and it's one of those albums which might have never, ever got finished. I've got, I've got projects and ideas, you know, on shelves and in the back of my mind, and it might have just stayed there if it wasn't that I agreed with Liz and she agreed with me that we'd have we'd put an album launch date in the diary even though the album wasn't ready. And that made me make it ready. It, it made me, having a deadline, put a rocket behind me. And uh, so it's all down to tonight, even though we're not there. We are in spirit. And... Uh, because, you know, the initial inspiration, it's like it's like a song, a tune. The idea comes to you and you go, oh, yeah, 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 I can't get that out of my head. It's going to be great. But then getting it finished, the process of arranging it, finding a beginning, an end, a middle bit, that takes that takes time. And sometimes, well, most of the time it doesn't happen. You know, there, there are so many hundreds more ideas than there are finished pieces. I think I think a lot of us are the same. So... Fantastic. Thanks to thanks for the rope walk and the ropery in the album launch. That would have been thanks to all that the album is out. And it's been a really different album to make. It's 
some of you have already got it. I know it's very gentle and relaxed and lots of floaty woodwinds and things like that. And it's not a band album. So, that, you know, it's magical when you're with the guys, when you're with Birchy and all the rest of them recording the album. It's exciting. And especially you get in the studio and all play together and then do your individual little icing on the cake bits. That's exciting. But there was a different kind of magic. Mostly I beavered away on my own. And uh, I had some collaborators beaving away in Sutton Bank and Bradford and India and Los Angeles, but we were never together in the same room. Um, but it was still magical and different kind of magic. You know, it's, you, one of your collaborators sends you a file of tablet or keyboard washes, and they, sometimes I put the headphones on and I go, oh man, that's amazing. <laughs> You did that for little old me, you know. Uh, so it was really beautiful and uh, a great process. So I thought tonight I'll kick off with the first track of the album and I'll explain a little bit. It's called Heian, H-E-A-N, and there's a sort of oblique thing over the the E of the of Heian, the word. And it's a Japanese word. It means peace and calm. And so you see where I'm coming from. And I see that's what we named the studio. It's called Heianji, which means the Temple of Peace and Calm, which it is on a good day. Some of you have been up here, and it is a, it's a peaceful, calm place. Um, so it wasn't half an hour ago when me and Joe were rushing around trying to get ready for you guys. But it is again now. So this is the Bansurai, the Indian bamboo flute. And... Uh, the titles usually come right at the end after the pieces have been recorded. And this one has always felt really, really sort of gentle and peaceful and uh, sort of flowing. So it had to be called Heian. And uh, it, seemed to be, it seemed to be a good opener. So I never tried it live, as it were. Um, recorded it with my mate Ernie Wood up in the... Uh, Sutton Bank slash Harrogate there and uh, he sent me his bits and I beavered away and then he beavered again and rearranged it And but let's see if we can make it work he's with me in spirit in the computer and uh, yeah, let's see if we can do it hey um, what could possibly go wrong nothing
Thank you, Ernie. I don't know if you're listening, but what lovely things you did on that on this record. We still call them records. Actually, you know what? One of my uh, lockdown projects is uh, setting up a deck again. I was gifted a deck by my wonderful mate, Mr. Phil Udell, and uh, I just need a morning to set it all up. Oh, I'm so excited. Get the vinyl out again. So I kind of lent my deck to my daughter. And uh, and then it sort of became hers. And uh, so I've been without for quite a while. And all the vinyl sitting there. I don't know if you, you guys play vinyl. Oh, I'm really, really excited. Maybe by next weekend, next time I see you on, on Friday, I might, have, I might have spun a disc. Oh, needle in the groove. Very exciting. So, there, yeah, I love that instrument. And somebody gave it to me as well. And the manager of an Indian restaurant in Sendai. I admired it and offered him a hundred bucks for it. And he gave it to me. Oh, joy. That's lovely. I'll put it away for now. So, uh, talking about uh, collaborations... Um, and maybe uh, another good thing to come out of the, the lockdown is, you know, you get back in touch with people and start getting projects together that you might not have done. And uh, the friend who I've had the longest musical association with in my career, I would say, or one of the longest, along with Mr. Dave Bowie, maybe, is um, Paul Birchall. Uh, the Chorley champ is over there in um, in Chorley in Lancashire, and uh, he and I have <laughs> we've been around the world and seen it all and done it all and shared all kinds of little sweaty little hot hotel rooms and been through thick and thin and written tunes and produced albums and we've had some times and uh, so. Uh, we chat from time to time, and I told him I was doing this, and I said, chuck us something over, you know, let's do something together. And uh, he said, oh, I've got this tune that which, which might work really well, and uh, so he sent it me, and uh, it's called Aircon, and so we're going to have a go at that next. Now, what do I need for this? I need a little soprano saxophone. Oh, there she is, the baby. Me and Joe set this whole thing up so fast, you know, because of having got into lockdown unexpectedly. But it's not very ergonomic, is that the right word? It's not set up very well. Every now and again, I make a movement and my head is yanked by the headphones and I keep pulling, this this cable keeps pulling sliders off. Maybe, that's, maybe I should do that, rearrange this setup before I allow myself to uh, set the vinyl up. Because... Um, my desk is getting ruined. The little slider pots keep coming off. So, with a bit of luck, Birchie and Gareth and Mark Bell and somebody else, Simon, who's Simon on this? I think he is, are in my computer. And I've got a bit of music. I wrote it out. There it is. It seems a long way away. I'm going to have a go. On my hastily scrawled little part, I've put in, join in when you can. That's instruction to oneself. And this is a great tune. I'd never heard it before. Paul sent it over, and it's one of those tunes. It was with me for the whole, yeah, a day or so ago, it was with me for the whole day, in a good way. Beautiful. Uh, now, which duet are you? This could... Yes.
Thank you, Mr. Birchall. Check him out, Paul Birchall. You can find him on the web. Beautiful writer, arranger, producer, player. Oh, wonderful. Enjoyed that. Cheers. What are you drinking? I'm not offering to get one in. Just wondering. Are you on the booze? Are you on the coffee? The tea? This could be the time, the time in the stream when I pop over and see if anybody's with me or if I'm talking to myself like I was the very first night because we hadn't quite worked out how to go live. Ah, people. Ah, fantastic. What are you saying? Some complicated chat going on there. Oh, Oh, Sally's like sorting gigs out and talking with you guys about where you'd like us to come and play when we're allowed to come and play again. So, oh, what am I supposed to be correcting? Can't think of a venue we visit in the Lancaster area. There's a great venue in Lancaster, isn't there? It begins with G. I can't remember. Um, Gregson? Gregson? I think it's an art centre type, 150 to 300, somewhere in that region. I've never been, but it's highly recommended. It'd be nice to go there. But no, <laughs> short answer. <laughs> we ain't got no gigs in Lancaster. Or... All that no- Yeeland is not that far away, is it? Can't remember where it is. Somebody will get Google Maps out. Anyway, I think I can leave you to talk amongst yourselves and think of another tune to play. So there's another friend who sends me tracks and bits, bits and pieces to play along to. Jeremy from Leeds, from Otley. And uh, he sent me um, a lovely v- version of the London Derriere, Danny Boy, a.k.a. Danny Boy. Um, and uh, I thought that would be nice to do. I thought it will be, be lovely to do on the Tin Whistle, probably. Because um, I've played it on the Tin Whistle before, but never with any accompaniment, so I thought that'd be good. And so today uh, I whipped out his track and I whipped out my bag of whistles and I couldn't make it work on any whistles. It either went too low or too high or it was the wrong key, um, which is unusual. So usually, <laughs> usually you can find at least one whistle that will make anything work. But so in the end, I made it work on a Chinese flute. I think I did anyway. I ended up with not much time to practice it, so that's an example of how the day's been. But let's have a go, because I'm amongst friends, and, and you know, if if I break down, you can sing and fill in the gaps. Um, I know it starts on an F sharp. So it's, it seems a bit onco- incongruous. This is the bamboo... Flute from China, traditional J- Chinese flute. And uh, it's got a certain little kazoo edge to it due to this bit of membrane here. So I'm trying to keep that to a minimum because it doesn't really <laughs> suit the material. Um, maybe you didn't need to know that. So I'm going to find Jeremy's track. And I'm going to hope it does start on an F sharp. And... I'm going to have a go, but you're going to take over if necessary. Is that a deal?
Chinese flute plays traditional Irish air. I didn't really succeed in getting rid of the, that edgy thing. But I, don't know, I enjoyed it. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks a million for that. You sent me some lovely stuff. And uh, we've also got a piece that we wrote together, which um, I haven't forgotten about. I really would like to do that piece, but it needs needs more than a quick run through. It needs me to think about it and possibly write it out. Yeah, that would be good to do another day. Um, oh, people have been posting haikus. Where do I find them, though? Oh, the beginning of the chat. Okay. Oh, thanks, Peter. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, right. Well, I need to put this down, go back to the chat and find a haiku. Oh, I'm caught up. So once again, to explain, if you're new, earlier on, in the, this is show number 20. I can't believe it. Streamed show number 20 from Snakey's Back Garden, aided by Sally, who's taking emails if you can't work out the chat or if you don't want to sign up to YouTube, which is fair enough. Um, you can email her and then she'll uh, text me by the wonders of um, a piece of string and a couple of cotton reels. And uh, Joe, my 16-year-old, who's going to be 17, is going to have a lock, locked down birthday very soon. So he ain't going to be having driving lessons, is he? Let's face it. Um, he's a technical wizard and Honestly, without him, I'd still be sort of scratching my head and looking at all my gear, wondering how I can get it to talk to the uh, World Wide Web and failing miserably. So um, thank you, Joseph. Good boy. You'll be rewarded with Doritos and beer when you're 17. So, oh yeah, and earlier on in the proceedings, maybe show, it's quite early on, maybe show number three or four or five, um, a constant at these shows is a wonderful gentleman who doubles dentistry and saxophony. So we call him Duncan the Sax Mad Dentist. And uh, he threw out a challenge to see if um, see if you guys could come up with some snaky-themed haikus. So Sally is advising me that if I go back to the chat and I go right to the beginning, I will find some haikus. Oh, another one for, for Duncan. He's had, this will be the third haiku he's had written about him. All right, got to get this right. <laughs> oh, this is very dental themed. Acid etch. Acid etch veneer. Patient, fearful, but trusting. Skillful artistry. <laughs> that is very good. It's more than he deserves. Yeah, he's a good boy. And. Now, did you say that that Yak has done one as well? Where is it? Um, um, um. Oh, yeah, here we go. <sighs> Yak's haiku. Snake, Sally and Joe streaming live another show. Expectant waiting. Ah, oh, excellent. Thank you. And uh, here are a couple which um, have been sent to me by email. Now, um, Danny and Viv, who uh, I remember where they used to be, Birkinshaw, now they're up in the northeast somewhere. Um, their very first attempt, I read it a few days ago, but I love it so much that um, we'll have that one again. This is a, it's a good Sunday night one as well. Air Still at Seven. Snake serenely serenades Orpheus at play. Oh, I love that. Makes me feel quite posh. Mind you, snake serenely serenades that reminds me of um, of the rat that is an unwelcome visitor at the moment. And it was suggested by um, my neighbour, Mr. John Button, that I got the old flute out and did the Pied Piper thing and escorted it out of the village. It was a very good idea if it would work, but I think that was just a made-up story, wasn't it? I suppose you could try it. Anyway, Danny and Viv have had another go. And uh, this one is for Joe. And I must give you the backstory to this as well. 
Because um, poor old Joe, he's 16. Obviously, he can't get his hair cut at the moment. None of us can. And he won't let me near him with the clippers. And uh, the poor babe came down the other day and said he'd found a grey hair. I said, I never saw it. He's probably He probably pulled it out immediately. But you should have a grey hair at 16, should you? Anyway, Danny and Viv's haiku for Joe. And bear in mind, we never see him. He's never been seen. Young hero off screen, silently supporting snake, hair long shocked by grey. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> hope you, uh, I hope you're taking note of these, Joe, and you can take them back to school with you if you ever go back. And I did one for Sally as well, so she wouldn't feel left out. And uh, Sally is, this, amongst many other things, is a, a fine seamstress who makes all my shirts. So here we go. Sally's silken thread, sewing spectacular shirts. Snake is resplendent. Ah, brilliant. Love it. And uh, Christian and Pat, they are in the Honley area down near Homeforth, I remember. This is the Shakuhachi one. Shakuhachi is the uh, Japanese end-blown bamboo flute. And uh, let me familiarise myself again with this. Oh, this is lovely. A whisper of air, energy of thought replete, releases its gift. Mm. I definitely want to keep these. And uh, our friendly promoter over there in Ennerdale, we just met, me and Gareth just met. We had a lovely day there doing shows in the yet another wonderful village hall. Um, he is pining for the reopening and the the after virus party, I think. He says, um, once it's gone for good, let us meet up and make merry music in Ennerdale. Indeed. We'll be making merry music all over the flipping place. You just watch. And uh, and Sally's written one. And it's about her role and Joe's role. It's not only me that gets nervous and races around and loses things. Right, she says. Nervously awaiting, live stream, watching, surveying, audience applause. Yes. Fantastic. All these hidden talents that you guys have got. Mind you, we haven't had a single one by Val Schultz today. Val is a saxophone player who had a career or does have a career to go back to, I think, in insurance. But suddenly he finds himself to be a poet as well. He's written about 20. We've had a few most nights. I don't think I've got any. None on the playlist tonight. But I'm sure there'll be some ready for next weekend. Um, that's a little bit similar to um, to Yak's Sally's, isn't it? Snake Sally and Joe streaming live, another show, expectant waiting. Same kind of theme. Brenda, you're welcome. Christine is back. Celia Wood, you're, you're a proper regular, as is Kevin Goodall. And Kevin Hallas and Paul Davis. Hi, Paul and Jane. So great to have you guys back. Sharon McGarry is here again. Judith Barton. Gary Holmes, you were here this morning, weren't you, mate? Are we? Yeah. You're in Thirsk, Gary and Haley. There's another good hall, <laughs> Thirsk Town Hall. All his gigs are missing. Oh dear, I'm at, in spirit. My heart is at the rope walk today. John's back. Hi from Scotland. Oh, and yourself. Hi. Sue Dibbon is back. Oh. Anybody who's anybody's here. Midge's, Midge's here. Lynn's here. Joe's here. And yeah, superb. <laughs> you're welcome, Phil. I'm glad you're here. Reconnect with the warmth of vinyl. There's got to be a haiku about 
the warmth of vinyl, hasn't there? Ernie, oh, you missed it. You'll have to rewind, mate. I played you. I played one of our tracks. <laughs> oh, it's an honour to work with you as well, mate. Simon is back. Simon's a regular on the show. The show. <laughs> oh, dear. Who do I think I am? Bloody hell. Right. More music. Y yeah, another... Keyboard player number four tonight, I think. We've had Birchie, we've had Ernie Wood, we've had Jeremy Bradford from Leeds. I like saying that, oh, it's from Motley, really. And now um, another wonderful keyboard player who I've not known very long at all, maybe about a year, I think, Stuart, isn't it? Um, Stu Collingwood from uh, up in Newcastle, often to be found playing with his trio at a venue called Charts on the Quayside. And a fantastic player, singer. Um, you should go and check him out when we reopen. It's a very civilised kind of Sunday afternoon gig. Um, he's joined me. And uh, let's see if I can... Let's see if he's there. See if I can find him. Let me get set up for this before I bring him in. Waiting in the wings. <clears throat> Back on the tiddler. Toys R Us, nine ninety nine. It's a curved soprano sax. Hi, Marcos. Stuart, are you there? Oh, hi, mate. Yes, let's do one.
he's gone. Oh, that was brilliant. Oh, thank you, Stuart. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, I love that tune. Oh, mate. So good to play. Great player. And I should have told you before, but he actually couldn't see his legs, but he's playing the bass with his uh, with his feet there. It's uh, old-style Hammond organ playing. Um, in olden days, used to get organ and drum duos with the um, organ player would be playing the bass parts with his feet on the, it was the pedals at the bottom of the Hammond organ. That is a skill. I can't even do two things at once. That is a skill. Brilliant. Thank you, Stuart. Ah, I don't know. We've got time for two more, do you reckon? Talking too much. I want to play two more tunes. Well, you can always just hit the flipping end button, can't you? But don't do that. Like us, subscribe. Joe said you've got to subscribe. It's good. I don't know why. Um, he says, if I'm going to be a proper YouTuber, I've got to ask you to like, give the thumbs up to counteract all the sax trolls that are going to give me the thumbs down because I don't play jazz or whatever. Um, don't have negative thoughts, snakey boy. And <laughs> yeah, if you subscribe, then um, you get a little reminder when we're going to go live. And you've already, most of you signed up to YouTube so that you can chat. But if you give us likes, it's good. And uh, any suggestions that you've got, things that you'd like to hear me play or questions about anything? Uh, yeah, there's lots of stories. You know, having Paul on the program, Paul Birchall, made me think about so many I've, I told you about Auckland yesterday didn't I and there's so many stories from the road we'll we'll get into a few of those maybe next weekend I want to get two more tunes in um, so I wake up in the morning I have ideas but and then they require preparation and work and to get ready for to be able to play them because of not being able to be with my musician friends They've kindly said to me, oh, it's fine, Snake, if you want to recreate the album tracks and use our performance, which I normally never would do, you know, unless it was very strange circumstances. But they said, go for it. So I am going for it. So I revisited an album that um made with Paul again and Neil Fairclough on the bass and Brian Hargreaves on drums in uh, Durham Old Town Hall and... Uh, Mr. Phil O'Dowell recorded it for us and it came out as a a live album called Live, I think. Was it called Live? Yeah. It had a green cover and uh, that went out of print but um, we've kind of re-released it as a digital download. You can get it from our website now. Um, but I revisited the, the sessions and prepared a, cu a couple of tracks. So I'd like to finish with two of those tonight and... Uh, First one's a great stomping tune to play again. So maybe I'm amazed. So I'll have a bit of that. Georgia on my mind. Maybe next weekend. I like that tune as well. So, yeah. Need the big boy out for this. A tenor saxophone. Oh, logistical problem. All my saxes are made by Yanagasawa. And this is definitely the poshest. Look at that. Oh, love it. A tenor sax. And here we go. Let me find the track.
told you it was a live album. Oh, I'm a bit, bit um, out of breath. <laughs> Maybe I'm amazed. And uh, I'm going to finish with a, a piece called In a Whisper. Not In a Whisper. In a Whisper. Although it could be In a Whisper. Another piece that originally... No, not originally. Originally it came out on an album called Snake Bites. And then we uh, put it on that live album. And uh, I do like that version. So we'll finish off with that. I'll say goodbye before I go. And what a pleasure it's been to have all you guys in my little humble shed down the bottom of the garden yet again. You're always very welcome here. Hello, Claudia. Mia, are you there? Ah, good. There's millions of you. <laughs> Are you chatting away to each other? Oh, a few suggestions. Million love songs next week. Maybe. See if there's a way I could do that. Uh, okay. I had a, a fear then that I wouldn't be able to find my whistle. Because everything's gone relatively smoothly. <laughs> uh... So I've really enjoyed having Paul Birchall with me and Stuart Collingwood. Thank you, Stuart. And uh, Ernie Wood and Jeremy. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Sally, for your hard work behind the scenes. And thank you, Joseph, for making it happen. We'll finish with it in a whisper. Um, yeah, see what you think. It's a mellow, mellow piece. You'd think that it wouldn't be possible to get excited on a whistle. I do sometimes. And I'll see you before I go. In a whisper.
Paul Birchall, Mr. Neil Fairclough, and Mr. Brian Hargreaves. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed your company, you guys. Thank you for being here. Are you here? Are you still here? Yes, you're still here. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it too. It's a reason to get out of bed in the morning. So Joe was late up today. We had a sax clinic workshop at 11 o'clock and he only just made it. Ah oh well, back to school tomorrow. Um, guys, take care of each other. Be kind. And I hope you can get enough to eat, stay warm. And that you and those you love are staying safe and healthy. Um, just got to do what we can, haven't we? And keep thanking the wonderful heroes that are looking after us. And uh, stay optimistic. Keep smiling. Thanks a million. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Joe. See you soon. See you next Friday, seven o'clock. Tell everybody. Tell your <laughs> tell your friends. Tell your family. Be nice to get more people with us. That'd be lovely. Bye.